are we? Why are we here? What are we doing? What even is a primate? And what makes humans any different than their chimpanzee relatives? Well, I can't answer any of your existential questions with any answers. I can give you some scientific answers for the differences between macaques and humans. Hello and welcome back to my primate podcast. Last week we talked about spider monkeys and this week we're talking about my favorite, one of my favorite monkeys. I love all of them, but one of my favorite monkeys, the Japanese macaque. So I know I talked about it a little bit in my last video, but first let's kind of establish what a primate is. So primates are a really unique group of really diverse mammals that all have pretty similar traits like arboreality or tails, but are all uniquely different and specialized to their own habitats. In order to get a closer look on these monkeys, I took my brother to the Great Plains Zoo where we were able to meet some of them in person. And honestly, I was able to enjoy the zoo with my brother and he loved that part of this video. If you've ever been to the Great Plains Zoo in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, then you would know as soon as you step in, there's a snowy macaques exhibit. And it went up when I was a little kid, probably like, I don't remember, 10, 12? I, I tried to remember for, for this portion, but I really can't. And I remember being super fascinated with it. I like didn't know much about monkeys. I thought monkeys kind of looked like this. And I thought I should start my series on this primate because there might be other people out there that might not know that there's different kinds of species of monkeys. So macaques are classified as being in the infraorder catarines, and they have 20 different species. I'm gonna have to read this one off, it's pretty long. Aruncal, Assam, Bonnet, Booted, Crested Black, Formosan Rock, Gorolanto, Hex, Japanese, Lion-tailed, Long-tailed, More Northern, Pig-tailed, Pagai Island, Rhesus, Sibirut, Southern Pig-tailed, Stump-tailed, Tibetan, Tonkian, Toke, and white cheek macaques. These are all the different species. And they're considered old world monkeys because they live in the old world, which is Asia and Africa. Most of the macaque species live in Asia. There is the exception of one, the Barbary macaques, and they live in Africa. They tend to be arboreal, but can also live on the ground and can even swim in some cases. So now we've got some of the generalized ideas of macaques out of the way, we can look at a more specialized lens and look specifically at the Japanese macaque. So they're sometimes known as snow monkeys in the part of the world they're from, which is Japan, and they tend to be a little larger than your average macaque species. They have pink faces and short furry little tails, they're covered in a sort of grey fur. And like their name suggests, they live on the island of Japan in some of the coldest climates known to monkeys. They're actually one of the most northern species of monkey. Monkeys don't tend to live in such cold climates, but they really thrive in the snow and the weather. It's probably why they were at the Great Plains Zoo. They just love the snow, I guess. So with some of that backstory and context out of the way, we can get to the real meat of it and see what some of the differences are between Japanese macaques and humans. The macaques are generally omnivorous. They eat a collection of plants, berries, seeds, flowers, insects, crabs, and bird eggs. But their most common, most delectable food item is fruit. Humans tend to eat similar foods in comparison. You know, we like fruit, we like berries, we like nuts kind of a thing. Um, but we don't tend to eat insects. Not a lot of people like in Western culture, especially don't eat insects, but we eat like crabs. Due to worldwide commercialization, humans have more access to different kinds of food all year round. Because they don't have access to food year round like humans do, they eat some plant barks, especially off trees, more woody plants and stuff, they can eat that more year round because it stays on the trees. Um, another thing that they tend to eat is like aquatic insects. I didn't know what that is, had to look it up. Insects live either like on or under the water and they will just like reach in there and eat them. Same with fish, there's a great videos of, of macaques eating fish. So I hope I can find one to, to overlay over here. But they they just stick their hand in the water and they come out with a fish and it looks, it looks fantastic. So diet has a direct effect on something we call dentition. Dentition is kind of the makeup of your teeth in your mouth. Not specifically you, but for species. And so they have a very similar denti dental makeup to humans, which is two, one, two, three two incisors, one canine, two premolars, and three molars. Um, this is common with a lot of monkeys, especially old world monkeys, and it's part of what makes us all similarly related. 
One difference that they have though is that they have a diastema in between their incisors and their canines in front, which is kind of what brings the differences. It's also part of the shape of their faces. They tend to have a narrower, more V-like shape for their face because their face slopes inwards more than humans do. And humans tend to have a more round and U-shaped uh, jawline, which is kind of what sets us apart. So with what they eat out of the way, we're gonna focus on locomotion or how they move. Humans are what are called bipedal, and that sets us apart from monkeys and other primates because we walk around on both our, our two legs, our two hind legs, while monkeys are quadrupedal and will walk around on what we call arms, their forelimbs and their hind limbs. This is what makes humans hu human in this aspect. Because humans are bipedal, it means that their structural makeup is going to look a little different to what macaques look like. So the foramen magnum, the spot where the spinal cord and the skull meet at the back of our necks, is going to be almost like vertical at the base of our skull, whereas a macaque will have it more towards the back of their head because they're walking around on all fours and looking forward in that way, rather than on two where it would make more sense to be laid out like this. Japanese macaques are slightly different than other primates in the way that they actually can run bipedally for long periods of time. Well, gorilla, gorillas can as well, but they can see it for much longer distances. And there's actually been numerous studies done about how they've been changing over time to move more bipedally, which is really interesting because that's part of what makes humans human, and now the macaques are doing it. While the macaques do move in a different way than humans, their hands are actually incredibly similar. So I'm just gonna like put my hand up here and then you're gonna see an image over here. Tr trust me on it, okay? And you're gonna see that there's a thumb right here on all their hands, and the only really big difference is physically that you can see is this finger tends to be shorter. They have nails too for digging and for like digging bugs, still digging, but like grooming each other, and that's part of their social behavior as well. Since macaques are quadrupedal, it tends to mean that they will live on the ground or in trees, typically in trees for quadrupedal. Um, the females will spend more time up in the trees, watching out to let the males know down below if there's pred um, predators arriving, and the males will keep watch from the ground below to make sure that the females are safe. In some sort of cultural and social aspect, the Japanese macaques are very different from humans. Monkeys tend to live in groups of 20 to 30 different monkeys and will be led by a dominant male macaque. The females will stay in their birth group, the one that they were born in, while the males are forced out before they become sexually mature to go either make their own group or stay in different roving bands of just males. The dominant male in this instance is the one who will protect the group of females and keeps a lookout for all of them. During the breeding season, Japanese macaques can have multiple partners, whether they're male or female, and this is called polygonadrous. The breeding season for these monkeys is between September and April and lasts about four to five months. Humans, on the other hand, are not polygonadrous typically. The general trend in some aspect is having a one partner at a time, but there are multiple instances of this not being the case. But that kind of is what sets humans apart in this aspect. They don't have multiple partners for a breeding season at a different time of year. Japanese macaques are somewhat similar to humans in the way that they have parental investment. They will take care of their children for longer periods of time and even keep caring for them, whereas some other mammals, like the giraffe, will just have the baby, it falls on the ground, they walk away, kind of a thing. They'll still nurse the baby, kind of take care of it, but they don't have as much investment placed into the life of one baby at a time. This is what kind of sets them apart from other mammals, but makes us similar in a way that this is something that primates do. Gestation in human females is about nine months, and that's when babies are born. And then in Japanese macaques, it's about six months, so it's somewhat similar, but much shorter, similar to the length of their breeding season at the time. So it's kind of interesting in that way where they can alternate for the year. Um, the mother tends to have one child at a time, similar to humans, where humans mostly have one child at a time, except for rare instances in both cases. Uh, the baby Japanese macaques will become independent at around 18 months old and will start venturing away from their mothers or be kicked out of the group. 
While macaques and humans do tend to be similar in some aspects, they're not always super identical, kind of showing their differences on the big phylogenetic tree, which is kind of the genetic tree of life and how most animals are related in this aspect. On the primates branch, there's the human offshoot, and then next to it's gonna be your, your apes, and then you're gonna have monkeys. And Japanese macaques are in this category, so they're not as related as some other species, but are still really similar to humans. So this concludes my second ever episode on primates, where before I talked about spider monkeys, this episode is about Japanese macaques. I think my plan for next week is gonna be columbus monkeys. Let me know if you're interested. Stay tuned for our next episode next week. We'll see what it is. And don't forget to like it, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. See you next week. <laughs>